More than Goombas, more than Koopa Troopas, or even Shy Guys. Toads are the most mysterious citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. What are these little dudes anyway? Where are their knees, their legs, their nipples? Why has Peach been designated their princess despite obviously belonging to another species? Most baffling of all, Toad's head. What's going on there? Do all toads wear the same kind of large round hat, or are the polka dotted head bulbs part of their mushroom like biology? We asked Nintendo for an official answer and they never got back to us. It might be because they're too busy counting all their Game of the Year awards and billions of dollars in Switch revenue, but it also might be because they're afraid of what might happen if we find out the truth. So let's explore the evidence that supports each side and find out whether Toad is wearing a hat or if that's just his head. Just so you know, we will be talking about spoilers for Super Mario Odyssey, so watch out for those. All right, let's start with Team Hat. The case for Team Hat. It seems weird to think that an entire race of people would all wear the same kind of headgear at all times, but it makes sense in the context of the Mario universe. Look at it this way. Each morning, Toad steps into the same pair of shoes, puts on the same style of vest, and pulls up the same brand of high-waisted diaper thing over their belly buttons. With a few exceptions, the only thing separating Toads is their color scheme. They're all wearing matching uniforms. It might not be a stretch to say that the hat is part of that uniform. That's a pretty solid foundation of logic. Unfortunately, one of the most popular arguments in favor of Team Hat isn't logical at all. You might recognize this as a clip from the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, a live-action cartoon hybrid television program that first aired in the late 80s. In one of the animated shorts, Toad reveals that his mushroom cap is actually just a cap, as he takes it off and wrings his own tears out of it. That's not even the only time something like this happens in the series. During the first episode, Toad is seen treating his head like a parachute. The big question is whether this really counts as an official representation of the Mario universe. Are the cart and sports game considered separate from the larger canon? What about the obscure janky stuff on the Philips CDI? Well, consider this. If you want to claim that Mario's full name is Mario Mario by citing the beautiful shit show that is Super Mario Bros. the movie, you may also have to agree that Bowser is a middle-aged white man with crusty gel spikes in his hair. Similarly, if you allege that Toad is wearing a hat because of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, you're also making the argument that Mario calls people paisanos and routinely yells pasta power. A decades-old kids cartoon show hosted by a professional wrestler isn't the most reliable source of official information. A recent Mario game, however, might be a different story. Here's Toad from Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U. Notice how when Toad grabs that power-up, the design of Toad's new helmet appears to replace his old headpiece rather than sit on top of it? You could argue that Toad squeezed his noggin into that helmet, but as of this recording, the squishiness of Toad's head has yet to be verified. Nintendo, we're looking at you. Come on. As it stands, it appears as though Toad may have just switched hats. Either that or the power-up radically altered the composition of Toad's skull, which might be too harrowing of a thought to contemplate. Then there's a matter of hair, as in, some toads have it. In Super Mario RPG, the composer Todovsky is seen with curls coming out from under the bowl. The same goes for several NPCs in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Again, maybe this is a natural extension of their fungus, but the simplest explanation is that this is hair coming from their head, under a hat. Other NPCs in Paper Mario have what looks like patches on their head, almost as though the bulbs are made of repaired fabric but we still don't really know what Toad's biology is like. The closest we ever got was Super Mario Strikers Charged, which briefly shows full polygonal models of the character skeletons during an electrocution attack. The black void where Toad's head bulb should be is deeply unsettling, but also illuminating. This seemingly confirms that toads are vertebrate creatures with skeletal structures akin to that of a human. At the same time, we see their skulls do not extend into the bulbous area of their heads. That could mean that the bulbs are made of cartilage or other soft tissue that isn't visible when you expose a cartoon character to several thousand volts. Or it could mean that there's just nothing inside that multicolored melon because Toad is wearing a dang hat. Rarely is Toad's biology referred to in dialogue, which is probably why this bit from this year's Mario Party, the Top 100, stood out. On a surface level, this line appears to imply Toad is wearing a hat and is ashamed of the unseen horrors underneath it. Then again, Toad could be saying, neither of us want to see him rip off that top part of the head and expose his brain, which would be accurate. To be totally fair, also released in 2017, Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle features Toad in a supporting role. At one point in the story, Toad carries an ice cube on his head and says he's fine because his head is well insulated. That seems like a pretty solid win for Team Hat. Until you consider this game was developed by Ubisoft. 
and the introduction establishes a game taking place in a universe where Mario exists in video games. Overall, there's a lot of evidence for the hat theory, but taken individually, most of the individual pieces of so-called proof are thin or ambiguous or just kind of bullshit. So you know what? Let's see if Team Head fares any better. The case for Team Head. It stands to reason that the Mushroom Kingdom is full of mushroom people. Toads all wear the same outfit, so that could mean everyone's wearing the same hat, but vests are also part of Toad's uniform. Why would you wear a vest bare-chested, unless your head is too big to put on a t-shirt? Maybe the strongest argument for Team Head is the recently released Super Mario Odyssey. Many Toads appear in the game, and they're mostly wearing actual hats. Outside of Team Fortress 2, nobody has ever had reason to wear more than one hat at a time. It's not like there's some kind of double hat fashion trend going on in Mushroom Kingdom. From what one of Odyssey's NPCs says, hats in general are a novel idea. The way Toad phrases his excitement makes it sound as though hats are the cool new thing that everyone's into and not, say, the thing that everyone in the land has been wearing since the dawn of time. This isn't even the first time Toads have been seen wearing hats on their bulbs. Back in Mario Party 2 on the N64, Toad wore several pieces of headgear. And in Mario Strikers Charged, the same game with that weird skeleton, the Toad players are wearing helmets over their bulbs. If that hat theory was correct, at some point, we should have seen a Toad with just a cowboy hat or just a pith helmet, but the bulb always comes part and parcel with every Toad. That head shape is always consistent in every representation of the character. When you die in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, the screen wipes away with a toad skull, which includes the bulb. This falls in line with a comment from the director of Treasure Tracker, who specifically references Toad's mushroom head in a Miiverse interview. There's another detail in Mario Odyssey that's worth mentioning, the cappy that can be found on one toad's head. Mario can only possess enemies after he knocks off their hats. A cappy could not possibly sit atop that toad if the spotted bulb were itself a hat. I don't make the obscure video game rules, folks. I just bring them up whenever there's an argument about imaginary characters. Speaking more broadly, Toadette poses a problem for Team Hat. Those pigtails seem to be coming from her pink head bulb and not from some unseen patch of hair underneath. The toads with hair from Paper Mario were a big get for Team Hat, but Toadette kind of cancels all of that out. On the technical side, Boundary Break made a great video that literally dives into the geometry of Toad's head. It's worth checking out the full video linked in the description below, but basically, they found that 3D renderings of Toad's never have a fully formed head under the bulb. Seems like a win for Team Head. Coming back to Mario Odyssey, there's a certain Toad that can't be explained by Team Hat or Team Head. As you see, this Toad is wearing headphones directly on his bulb. You're probably just now noticing that Toads don't have earlobes, so to speak of. So what in the hell is going on here? Are those big spots his ears? How would that even work? I don't think we could count this unknowable paradox as a win for Team Hat or for Team Head. For everyone's sake, let's just move on to the verdict. In conclusion, in an extremely scientific Twitter poll of over 3,000 correspondents, 66% agreed that Toad is not wearing a hat and that the bulb is in fact his head. Given the evidence, we have to give it to Team Head on this one. The claim that Toads wear hats is too thin, and the best bits of evidence have some problems when it comes to canonical legitimacy. So that's one of the Mario Universe's mysteries solved. Now, as to whether the orifice Birdo shoots eggs out of is a mouth or something else altogether, you're on your own.